In our last lesson, we talked about Article 27 of the Civil Code. It is one of the provisions on the chapter on human relations. Like most of the provisions of this chapter, it grants a cause of action or the basis for coming to court for anyone who suffers a material or moral loss because of the refusal or neglect of any public officer or employee to perform his or her duties. Article 27 applies to instances of non-feasance or the failure or refusal to perform one's duty. Non-feasance is just one kind of misconduct committed by public officers. The others are misfeasance and malfeasance. Last time we also discussed the distinction between ministerial duties and discretionary duties of our government officials. Ministerial duties are those which government officials are bound to do given a set of facts and circumstances. These acts, unlike the discretionary duties, do not require the exercise of discretion or judgment. The distinction is important because the law provides a remedy to compare a public official to perform form a ministerial act. When a person suffers moral or material loss as a result of an official's refusal to perform a ministerial act, the remedy is the special civil action for mandamus and damages as provided under Article 27. Today, we're taking a look at Article 28 of the Civil Code or the provision prohibiting unfair competition. Again, this is one of the provisions that's treated as a reading matter, kapatid. But you will see this again when you get to intellectual property law and in Civil Law Review 1. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to 1. Define unfair competition within the context of Article 28 and the Intellectual Property Code. 2. Enumerate instances where this provision applies. 3. Cite the remedies allowed under Article 28. All of this and more coming right up! Hi, my name is Lex and welcome to Lex in Motion. In this channel, I'll be helping you build your competence, confidence, and capability in law school. Start today by hitting the subscribe button below. New episodes are posted every Friday. Article 28 provides that unfair competition in agricultural, commercial, or industrial enterprises or in labor through the use of force, intimidation, deceit, machination, or any other unjust, oppressive, or high-handed method shall give rise to a right of action by the person who thereby suffers damages. Walang mahirap unawain dito, kapatid. Himayin muna natin ang provision para atin itong maintindihan. The first part of the provision tells us where it applies. Malinaw ang sakop ng batas. Agricultural enterprises, commercial enterprises, industrial enterprises, and in labor relations. Agriculture does not only cover planting and sowing on the soil. Under most of our tax laws and environmental Environmental loss agriculture also means the raising and production of ornamental plants, fisheries, aquatics, poultry, and to a certain extent, timber production. Commercial refers to wholesale and retail trade, including their allied services like logistics, storage, and warehousing. Industrial covers anything in between agriculture and commerce. Service industries, manufacturing, engineering, construction, and other services. Labor relations, on the other hand, covers instances where there exists a relationship between one who works, called an employee, and the person for whom the employee works. The employer. Kung ating susumahin ang lahat ng ito, ang unfair competition ay maaaring mangyari sa anumang uri ng negosyo so long as the business activity is done for profit. Unfair competition is committed through force o paggamit ng karahasan, intimidation o pananakot, deceit o panloloko, machination or manipulation or any other unjust, oppressive or high-handed method. I think it was the late Dean Albano who mentioned in his book that unfair competition can be committed in any manner so long as it's contrary to good faith. In his book, Justice Paras gives us examples of unfair competition. Kasama sa unfair competition ang pangungopya ng produkto ng may produkto at pagbebenta nito sa mga existing customers. Unfair competition din ang pagdedeklara ng isang strike o work stoppage ng walang sapat na dahilan ng hindi dumadaan sa proseso o isang illegal strike. Unfair competition din maituturing ang paninira sa reputasyon ng produkto ng ibang manufacturer. 
Remember kapatid that the law does not punish competition. Competition in business is that which drives innovation. Companies compete against one another in terms of innovation, better value, and better service. Kung hindi nagcompete ang Apple at ang Microsoft noong 90s and early 2000s, hindi tayo magkakaroon ng Mac OS X at ng Windows 10. Kung hindi dahil sa competitive features ng Android at mga innovation ng Samsung, ay maaaring hindi nagagalingan ng Apple na ngayon yata ay wala ng libring charger, wala pang libring earphones at huli na na nagkaroon ng 5G compatibility. Competition in business drives us to do better if the law does not allow competition in certain industries, then we have a monopoly or oligopoly. Remember the time when we did not have Converge and the only internet service providers here were Globe, Smart, and PLDT, hindi na nila ginagalingan ng service nila. When Converge came into the market, they offered good service and good value. Dahil dyan, napilitan ng PLDT at Globe na sumabay with competitive plans for fiber internet. Internet. Under Article 28, the law does not prohibit competition. What it seeks to prohibit is competition that's not fair. Halimbawa, ikaw at ang iyong kapitbahay ay nagsimulang magtinda ng palabok at puto ngayong panahon ng pandemya. Nauna siya sa iyo ng ilang araw pero halos sabay din kayong nagpost at nagpa-order sa Facebook group ng inyong subdivision. The fact that both of you are making and selling pansit does not make one or both of you liable under Article 28. What the law prohibits is when the competition becomes unfair. Kunwari ay ikinalat ni kapitbahay na madumi ang kusina ninyo. O fake news, gaya ng huwag kang o-order ng palabok dyan at yung mga huling kumuha ng bilaw ay nagkaroon ng malubhang diarrhea. Unfair competition exists when you retaliate by driving down prices from 35 pesos kada styro, ibinagsak mo ang yung palabok to 12 pesos at dinagdagan mo pa ng extra chicharon at extra itlog. That's pricing in such a high-handed manner amounting to cutthroat competition. People will buy your palabok and they will continue to support your product until you drive out your neighbor out of business. This is the kind of competition that Article 28 seeks to suppress. Again, kapatid, hindi bawal ang mag-compete sa isang negosyo. Hindi bawal na kumita o maghanap buhay. Ang ipinagbabawal ng batas ay ang mga unjust methods with the goal of taking away the fair chance for someone else to make a livelihood. Article 28 is a provision under the chapter on human relations. These are the provisions of the civil code that gives us the right of action, the reason to come to court or the legal basis, upon which we can claim some relief, usually the award of damages, or a permanent order from the court preventing the defendant from performing acts of unfair competition, also known as a permanent injunction. Mula sa ating natalakay, here are the requisites of Article 28. 1. The plaintiff and the defendant are engaged in the same or similar line of business or enterprise. 2. The defendant performs acts which include force, intimidation, deceit, machination, or any other unjust, oppressive, or high-handed method. 3. Such acts of the defendant results to injury on a competitor or trade rival. The best way for us to understand Article 28 is to discuss jurisprudence under Article 28 of the Civil Code. Let's talk about a recent case, Willaware Products Corporation versus Jesse Chris Manufacturing Corporation. Jesse Chris Manufacturing Corporation filed an action for damages under Article 28 of the Civil Code in the amount of 2.5 million pesos against Willaware Products Corporation. Jesse Chris Manufacturing Corporation was engaged in the business of making plastic automotive parts, specifically mga bushing sa under chassis ng ating mga sasakyan, mga spring eye bushing, center bearing cushion, at shock absorber bushing. On the other hand, Willaware Products was engaged in the business of making kitchenware, mga kasangkapan sa ating mga kusina mula sa plastic at metal. Both companies operated in close proximity of one another. Both were located in Caloocan City. 
Sometime in November 2000, natuklasan ng Jesse Chris na hindi lang mga sandok at kutsilyo ang paninda ni Willa Ware, na ito pala ay gumagawa na rin ng mga bushing, mga exact same models na gawa ni Jesse Chris. Nagbebenta na rin si Willa Ware sa mga customer, mismo ni Jesse Chris at sa mas mababang halaga. In its defense, Willa Ware claims that over the years, some of the employees of Jesse Chris move to them. This enabled them to understand the process of making plastic automotive parts. Furthermore, Willaware did not have the exclusive right or patent for making these parts. There are many other companies selling the same parts. Let me pause right here kapatid and show you the merits of Willaware's argument. Malayo ang presyo ng mga piyesa ng kotse, truck o motor mula sa kasa o mga authorized repair centers versus sa presyo ng ating mga local auto supply. Minsan doble o triple ang babayaran mo para sa substantially the same part. Ang hugot ng Willaware ay kahit sino naman ay makakagawa ng piyesa para sa Mirage, Vios o Navara. Ang kailangan lang ay sample na pwedeng paggayahan. Pareho lang silang hindi authorized ng mga kasa na gumawa ng parts. Maano bang natuto lang din ng Willaware at ngayon nag-expand lang sila ng products nila. The Regional Trial Court ruled in favor of Jesse Chris. It awarded damages amounting to 2 million pesos plus costs. On appeal, the Court of Appeals ruled that the petitioner was not able to prove exactly how much it lost because of the acts of unfair competition. Instead, it awarded nominal damages of 200,000 pesos in place of the original 2 million pesos. The Supreme Court, speaking through Justice Josdado Peralta, teaches us that in order to qualify the competition as unfair, it must have two characteristics. One, it must involve an injury to a competitor or trade rival. And two, it must involve acts which are characterized as contrary to good conscience or shocking to judicial sensibilities or otherwise unlawful. In the language of our law, these include force, intimidation, deceit, machination, or any other unjust, oppressive, or high handed method. The public injury or interest is a minor factor. The essence of the matter appears to be a private wrong perpetrated by unconscionable means. Here, both characteristics are present. First, both parties are competitors or trade rivals, both being engaged in the manufacture of plastic-made automotive parts. Second, the acts of the petitioner were clearly contrary to good conscience, as petitioner admitted having employed respondents' former employees, deliberately copied respondents' products, and even went to the extent of selling these products to respondents' customers. Kung hindi man i-discuss sa klase mo sa person sa Article 28, kapatid, sigurado ako, ito ay inyong babalikan sa inyong klase sa intellectual property law. Iba ang definition ng intellectual property code sa unfair competition. Unfair competition has been defined as the passing off or attempting to pass off upon the public of the goods or business of one person as the goods or business of another with the end and probable effect of deceiving the public. The essential elements of unfair competition are one, confusing similarity in the general appearance of the goods and two, intent to deceive the public and defraud a competitor. In unfair competition under the IP code, there are two companies manufacturing the same goods and one of them copies or uses a similar appearance with the intention of deceiving the public. Halimbawa kapatid, bago ko nakilala ang aking asawa ay hindi talaga ako kumakain ng gulay. Except, one, yung kapirasong dahon na nasa loob ng Jollibee Champ. Pangalawa ay ang snaku. Dahil ito ay vegetable crackers, technically sa isip ko ito pa rin ay gulay. Whenever I visit the groceries, sure ako nakukuha ako ng snaku. There was this one time kapatid when I saw a green package, kumuha na lang ako ng dalawang supot. Nagmamadali na ako nun kapatid when I reached the cashier, laking gulat ko na hindi pala ito snaku, kundi chichirya na gawa sa green peas. Other products na nakikita kong hawig ang logo at design ay ang Mafran at Jufran na ketchup. This is a long long case kapatid and we will discuss it in later episodes. 
confusingly similar din sa aking paningin, possibly dahil na rin sa aking gender, ang packaging ng Sisters Charmy, Modes at Cotex. Lahat yan sa aking unang tingin ay iisa, unless hihinto ako at akin itong tititigan. There is another provision on unfair competition in our laws and that is Article 189 of the Revised Penal Code. Hindi na ito masyadong tatalakayin sa criminal law too, pero ito ay inyong pag-uusapan sa intellectual property law. Article 189 punishes any person who in unfair competition and for the purposes of deceiving or defrauding another of his legitimate trade or the public in general shall sell his goods giving them the general appearance of goods of another manufacturer or dealer either as to the goods themselves or in the wrapping of the packages in which they are contained, or the device or words thereon, or in any other features of their appearance, which would be likely to induce the public to believe that the goods offered are those of a manufacturer or dealer, other than the actual manufacturer or dealer, or shall give other persons a chance or opportunity to do the same with a like purpose. Sa ilalim ng Article 189, bawal ang pagbebenta ng clone ng isang bagay, either clone ng mismong product or clone ng packaging or both. Recent na mga halimbawa na nakikita ko sa Facebook ay ang mga clone ng mga barena at grinder ng makita. Kamukhang kamukha ng mga legit kapatid pero nakakatakot dahil malayo ang presyo. Isa sa mga nasa Christmas wishlist ko many years ago ay ang Bose Quiet Comfort 35 version 2 wireless Bluetooth headphones. Ang huling naaalala ko ay nasa $350 ito nung sinilip ng ate ko sa States pero dito sa Lazada ay nasa $2,500 pesos lang. Libre pa ang shipping. In all of these three causes of action, pinakamalawak ang coverage ng Article 28 of the Civil Code. Mas specific naman ang cause of action under the Intellectual Property Code dahil isa sa mga elements ay dapat damay ang mga ordinary consumers katulad, katulad natin. Finally, unfair competition under the Revised Penal Code is no longer just an action for damages but it's a criminal case. To summarize tonight's lesson, number one, Article 28 prohibits unfair competition in agricultural, commercial, industrial enterprises as well as in labor. Two, there is unfair competition when a person performs an act contrary to good faith in the course of trade or business. Three, this act must result in the injury of a competitor or trade rival. Four, the broadest cause of action under unfair competition is found under Article 28, not those in the IP Code or the RPC. That's it for unfair competition kapatid and I hope you learned something new in the last few minutes. There is a short quiz for me to know if you have understood the lesson. You can find that in the description down below. If you would like us to continue these lessons on persons and later on family relations, please type yes in the comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Like and share this video for Good Law School Carmine. I will see you next Friday.